Good morning. This is Spirit Journey. It is June 18, 2019, and it's 9.03 a.m. This video is going to be what self-denial can do to a person. I am motivated to do this video based on a video that I was watching a moment ago on YouTube. It really um, made me feel intense anger at the video, the, the person who did the video. I would not say who, who did the video or even the title of the video. But it was a, I mean, the video was executed very well. But the message I got, I got out of it was about self-denial and that self-denial could make you sick, physically sick, could have you hospitalized. And this person was hospitalized. And everything about the whole video, it, it, it avoids discussing certain things. And I think why this upset me so much was because of my life growing up and the self-denial slash self-hatred that I had for myself growing up. This uh, YouTuber did a video, like a Draw My Life video. A Draw My Life video is a video that explains in picture form about someone's life. It usually goes from their childhood and up to where they live now. It's like an exploration and explaining who they are now. And on the surface of this very brief video, it was a very cute, cute video. It was cute, nicely done, very brief, fast-paced. But my mind is analyzing it. And there was an expectancy by watching this video. This the only thing that I will share about this YouTuber, that this YouTuber is a black person of African heritage. And I'm not going to even give the, the name of the country in Africa where this person's uh, mother was from. Well, well, you know, I have to even back up with that. They don't specify that the mother and or father was born there. See, that's another issue. If you're going to, it, if you're going to do a video, a, a Draw My Life video, then discuss those topics. It's like, it's like you're giving, you want to make a sandwich. You're, you're giving the bread, but not the meat inside. Okay, and if you're vegan, okay, not the lettuce that's inside, you know. So I think part of that is what was getting me a little frazzled. Like you're watching this and maybe my expectancy because this person is a black person and then I am also a black person that I was waiting for the person to share that particular part, that, that commonality. But it was all avoided. And it was the avoidance in the Draw My Life video that was, that it wasn't there. So he, he comes from a small family. He has a sibling. And he avoids specifying where he's from. Where, well, yes. He was born in the UK, but where is his mother or father from? That's avoided. 
And then he mentions that, you know, he, he had a good childhood. You know, he, he enjoyed where he lived. He, he mentioned all the idealisms of his childhood. And then he mentions that his uh, mother wanted his kids to go to a particular country in Africa for one year. But he doesn't explain why. And my assumption is the mother wanted them to know where they come from. It is obvious he's a man of Africa. He does not look biracial, anything like that. He looks like a pure-blooded African, which is nothing wrong with that. But you imagine if someone has direct roots from a particular country, no, no matter what, what part of the world, that you're going to mention because it, it makes a big part of you. And the person looks like they could be around my age. They could even be older. So there are certain things that were going on at particular time when this move happened. Okay, so, so the, the racial climate in the UK was, was intense. So all that, you know, it's, it's not mentioned. So he's living an ideal uh, lifestyle in the UK, but he's not m mentioned about his interaction with the uh, white people there in the UK. It's as if it doesn't exist, like his race doesn't exist. And I, I know for me, living in the United States, in New York City, that there is a racial climate, something you cannot avoid, and especially, especially if you're a black man, black male, in Europe, you're going to notice that who you are in relationship to being around a white male and a white female. You're going to feel and hear things directed towards you unless he lived in an all-African community. And I would tend to doubt that to some part because he seemed very disconnected to his African heritage. So he mentions that he goes to the, the country, I presume, where his mother is from, and again, why doesn't he make mention where his mother's from and why that specific country? So again, it is an avoidance of heritage and, ident and identity, in my opinion. So, um, you don't hear anything about his father. So, either the father had died or whatever, but it, it's, it's no mention. Also, um, he, when, he, when he arrives in the country, in West, it's in West Africa where he went to, he, he did go with uh, his sibling, and of course he's going to feel, um, it's going to be some type of culture shock, because again, he physically never been to that place before. So there was uh, a feeling of isolation he mentioned, and that he had family there, but he, he didn't acquire friends. And he would console himself by uh, singing uh, songs from Europe, from uh, European, uh, European people there, and how he longed for food from the UK. Now, I can understand that you, you only could really long for something that you're accustomed to. But it had me really thinking about what his mother did not do for her kids. Now, yes, the mother worked. 
the mother had different occupations and the mother did have them live in a, a large home but it seemed like I guess sometimes when parents leave their homeland they, they're not about they're, they're about survival they're about putting food on the table having uh, make sure their children are safe you know what what any parent would want for the kids but there was no training about the homeland there was no introduction like you know like a pre-introduction okay I'm going to send you back to a short time I want you to know your roots but that's not even said at least he's not saying it in the in the video so the Evidently, the, there's no, the mother did not cook any foods from her homeland because everything is foreign to him. So I, so I wonder what, why. And again, maybe the mother wanted the children to be Europeanized. If the country was that good where they came from, they, they wouldn't have to leave. So if something is painful to you, you leave. You, this new country embraces you, then yes, you embrace them. Okay? Then it seemed like at one point they started to enjoy the, their, their new environment. And then the YouTuber mentions that there was a coup in that country, and so they had a return back to the UK. But this coming back again the mother's plan was one year he doesn't specify whether he actually stayed there for one year but the mother's plan was for one year and we and come back but it, it by assumption that when they said the, the coup occurred that the coup shortened their trip and so they were forced to, to go back to the UK but this coming back to the UK, they for whatever reason they they said that they could not cope. They they started he couldn't relate to anything for a while, even though he was going uh, to college and everything, and he had to be hospitalized due to stress. What was this? What was this stress? He doesn't specify specifically about what the stress was. Was the stress being called names, um, racial slurs, or was it just the institutions, the, the, the uh, types of, um, you know, the lifestyle, the buildings, the, you know, all things like that. Uh, what I can share about myself is that I had briefly left the U.S. mainland one particular time. I, I left twice, no, three times. One when I went to the military, another time when I went to the Caribbean and lived there for about three and a half years, and then another time I was away for three years in Maui. And when it, it was the last time when I returned back from Maui, it was a little short, shorter than three years stay there, I felt uh, like a culture shock. Uh, I had gone to this particular store, and when I w it was a, a very large department store that I had been there before. But I felt overwhelmed. It was a lot, a lot of people, people dressed in ways that were very uh, freakish. When I remember when I left the department store, I started to cry. But the, the good note, though, is that I overcame it. And in fact, I wind up getting a job at that same store that I cried at. So yeah, I could see that someone could leave their home and then come back. And here was there, I would presume, less than a year. And then I was 
over there for, you know, the place where I went for about three years. But either way, culture shock is culture shock. But what I found, like, what, what was interesting was, okay, he used wisdom, though, to help himself get back on the swing. He started reading self-help, self, I'm sorry, self-help books. And these books were written by Eastern Europeans. At least the surname was an Eastern European sounding name. And he said that he traveled to uh, this, this country in South America. And it, it really um, encouraged him, this, this <clears throat> South American trip. This particular place in South America does have a very large black population. But he doesn't go, surprisingly, he doesn't go back to Africa to, to visit, to uh, encourage him. So again, I felt that, okay, if a country though, and if that country is still under social unrest, because it did have a coup, so I can understand for him not to return to there. But he does go to a South American country, and it, it said it really uh, encouraged him. So I, I asked myself in all this, everything about it just sounds that he's, he's not embracing his own nation or his, the culture that he comes from to, to build himself up, but a foreign place. And it's, it's, he's never acknowledging that heritage, the love of his country, the love of his, his mother's ancestry. Um, I, it's just very confusing. And, I, and when I was watching the video, I started to understand, come to a, an understanding. Where I live, you have many, many nationals. And there's a particular, um, you know, we have a very large Hispanic population here. And the Hispanic nations from the Caribbean in particular, that the mothers make sure that they teach their children their language. They introduce them to their foods. And so I understand now that, see, for your children to survive in the U.S., in a very racialistic country, a country historically that has a innate hatred to people of African origins. And so I understand now the importance to fortify your children to love that culture, that heritage, that language as a tool to act as a shield of protection of their identity, whatever what your identity is. So that when they go out there, that identity precedes them. It goes forth first. And that's what people see. And with this other YouTuber that I'm mentioning, that's really never done. But they did acquire other cultures' identity to help build them up. But it's never mentioned. It's like I'll get a, an artificial pot, patch, something that's like but not that true identity. And so it's like a denial. And I'm wondering whether the 
the hospitalization that he come from, that, that he experienced, is that really that was his own body, his own psyche really trying to awaken him? Hey, you need to start embracing yourself. Stop running away from yourself. Stop running away who you are, black man. Stop running away from yourself, African man. You need to start embracing the you. And so, sometimes I think we may use these artificial patches of a heritage that's something like you, but it's not you. Out of the whole video, though, that he did, he said two things that I thought, that I thought was very, very powerful. And that was this. The first one, he said, was, we must connect with others who remind us of whom we are. Now, that is a powerful statement. But, you know, I... In my ears, when I hear this, I would assume that that would mean to start associating with people who are from your culture, from your heritage, from your, your parents, na your, your, the nation that you come out from. He knows where his, what his, where his people are from. It's not like myself, I don't know where my African heritage is from. But yes, I do come from a Caribbean background. And yes, those people living in the Caribbean, yes, they come from Africa of some part. Usually West Africa or Central Africa. Okay? But you don't know what nation. We don't know. We don't know what, what, uh, um, what tribe or anything like that. But you have a, a general location if you take a DNA test, which I did. But he, he doesn't do that again. So I didn't understand why he says to connect with others who remind us of, of whom we are. So unless who he is, is associating with. Now, the person that he did connect with is an Asian woman. A beautiful Asian woman and nothing wrong with Asian or European or... Uh, indigenous people of the Americas, okay? All nationalities are good. But if he's, but th that's where my problem is with this video. He's saying a very true and profound statement. So is this again another denial that he has? Is, is who he thinks he's connecting with really bringing out who he is. So that that's that it's a question. And then the other statement that was very true is to let love and not fear guide us. So again, that's a very powerful, powerful statement. Let love and not fear. But we shouldn't let denial guide us guide us either. And I feel that he's not really showing his self-love in this video because it's never acknowledging who he really is. Yes, you can say in the spiritual sense that he is love, that we all love, love energy, yes. But it's not because, see, we are social beings. And that social aspect of who he is, the, na the nation that he comes from. And I doubt him as an African man, a dark-skinned African man. And no, I doubt he's biracial. Okay? And you're living amongst white people and white men. It's always going to be put in your face. You are always would be reminded. Just like I am reminded who I am in contrast. It's always in contrast who you are, you are around. And so if you are around people who historically 
have done things against you to oppress you and you are an African male, a dark-skinned black African male, you're going to be reminded of that aspect of you, but it's never addressed. And I notice that it's not addressed in his other videos about who he is. And initially, like when you peruse around his his channel, he did start off in a very Afrocentricness in one aspect. He did he does include in his thumbnails his YouTube thumbnail pictures, some black people. But as time went on, and as he got more and more popular on YouTube, he seems to show less and less that black element. And I think that's my real issue with his channel and with really receiving some of the gems that he does share. Again, a lot of the stuff he mentions is very true and very spiritual, but it's that particular part that I feel that is problematic, one of self-denial. And again, why self-denial bothers me is because I, that's what I come out from. I come out of self-denial, self-denial of who I am, I wanted to associate at one time with anything non-black, non-African, every aspect of me. And But I could no longer deny that heritage. And so, life showed me. Life was telling me, stop running away from yourself. Start embracing yourself. And this goes with any nationality, any tribe, any, any, any origins. Running away from yourself is never the answer. And as time goes on and on in your life, it's, it's, it seems like the more you deny yourself, the more that you deny your black heritage, it seems like in the wet, what they call the Western world, the more you're rewarded. And that's also why I'm sharing this video. Because I feel it's a type of social engineering. It's like saying, like, I feel like this social media is teaching the more you ignore your black heritage or black-centered topics, the more you're rewarded. You get a nice girlfriend, black men, from outside of your group. You'll be rewarded that. You're rewarded with more money. Hey, don't talk about the problems that happen in uh, the black community where you're living in Europe or in the United States. Don't talk about it. Make everything seem like it's perfect, like all spirituality, but deny what's happening amongst you. And I, I, can't, I can't take that. And there's another YouTuber, again, I like his content in general, but it's like, okay, he has, a, again, I'm not going to mention the, the channel name, but he gives, but part of his name is about um, his black race. And he's, the content is very good. And now he's getting real, real popular. His channel has grown tremendously in a year. And at one time, they even took away his channel, and then he had to reestablish his channel, so he lost all his viewers, and then he had to start off from scratch. But now that he's really on fire now, now he doesn't use the name of his race. 
And now he just used acronyms for his channel. And so again, it's the same type of thing. The same thing that with a, a black channel, I can't make, okay, I don't want to say black channel, but a black man or black person who initially uses in his channel name or topics that have a black theme to it. And then when you get popular, it's like, again, covering your heritage, courage, co covering your, your beginnings, and that you, you're throwing it, throwing it away in the garbage. And it's this, this central theme is what's bothering me. And I don't like it. I don't like the what, what how I internalize to um, cover your beginnings. Now, again, as time goes on in life, life in general, regardless of your race or nationality or any origins, you, you never stay the same. Okay, it's like a, you have an infant. When the infant turns, let's say, uh, five years old, he's not going to be wearing, or he or she's not going to wear the same clothes. So it'll be, it's foolish of me to think you're going to stay the same. No, there, there is progress. There is growth. It's the enhancement of your origins. But it, that's not what I'm talking about. I feel that it's an obscurification of your origins or say okay I needed you to get here but now that I've arrived I don't have to make mention of that anymore that's what I'm getting at with this doing this video and I, I don't want this I, I, I don't want this. this why do we have to change this way why do we have to marry outside of our group when we acquire fame and money or popularity. I want to know why. Why can't we stay within our own group? Why can't we move our group with us on the journey? Instead, I feel that we're left behind. And I, it's, it's, a, it's a horrible feeling. It is a horrible, horrible feeling. I want growth for all of us, all you YouTubers, regardless of our national origins. But I, I feel being true, be, be true of who you are. Don't try to hide it by just not talking about it because I'm sure it, it is affecting you outside of the social media world. When we leave social media, I mean, when we physically leave our house and we go outside to the, 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 the world, they're not going to know who we are, that we're YouTubers or Instagrammers, you know, or tweeters. It, we're just regular people. And in this regular life, we encounter life. We encounter the biases. We encounter all these things. And it's never mentioned. And it's that type of, what I feel, hiding the fact. Or, or almost like living in la-la land. Or maybe I have it all wrong. Maybe this person is totally balanced and totally free of biasness or something. That's all that I'm saying. So wh whatever what is the true reality of these people, only they know what they truly encounter in life. If it is peaches and cream, I hope they can really teach us all how to acquire that. Because I haven't acquired that, that um, peaches and cream life. When I go outside, I see the pain and suffering 
in the community that I live in. And now, it's not just the black people that are suffering. I now see even white people suffering on the streets. Things that I didn't even really know existed. But I'm seeing it firsthand that people are hurting. And the hurt is now expanding even outside of the black community. It is now in mainstream white communities in America. That's the United States of America that I'm referring to. So again, I, I say this, I do this video in love, but one that is questioning one that is trying to understand why I'm experiencing what I'm experiencing in my heart. So I wish you all well in social media world. I wish us all the spirituality that I'm seeking for myself. Yes, each one teach one. Teach us how to acquire this beautiful utopia world. Take care guys. Signing out.